And I'm Paulus. And welcome to Up Your Art. The podcast which explores how the arts can enrich your life. Hooray! <laughs> I was a bit worried that that might take another take then, but I'm very excited that we managed it. Yeah, yeah. Slick, <laughs> slick we are, Emily. It's slick. this all not being in the same room together business. I think it makes us slick. <laughs> That's the way. That's it. How have you been? Do you know, I've been uh, adapting quite well to this whole thing. I, I'm writing a blog, which is a piece of creative writing. Um, nice. My blog has become a weekly installments murder mystery set in a cabaret club. So if you're into uh, hapless compares, uh, uh, catch fighting burlesque dancers and bubbly wine uh, behind the backdrop of murder, then uh, you should be checking out my blog there. By tomorrow, there'll be six uh, little installments of it. It's called The Blue Angel. I'm having a lovely time writing it. <laughs> How about you? Um, well, I've just finished all of my coursework, so I'm looking forward to reading your um, blog uh, on Wednesday because uh, I'll have the whole day to myself. <laughs> Tell us about the course you've just finished. How wonderful that it's over for you. Uh, yes, I've been doing a level four dance teacher training. So although I already teach um, burlesque, it was uh, it's looking into a little bit more about dance as a whole and um, like learning a bit more about ballet, different styles. I've observed some belly dance classes, which were quite amazing. Um, so uh, yeah, so I had to, and then I had to apply like teaching theory, which was really hard. <laughs> it's been a real slog, hasn't it? And uh, lovely weather outside and lots of reasons to be distracted, like, you know, make a podcast and things <laughs> like that. And it's, uh, but it's done, you've finished it now. Yeah. Yay! Brilliant so, stuff. <laughs> We'd also like to know what people, uh, other people are doing in Keeping Creative with, wouldn't we? Yes, exactly. So I have been re-listening to our old podcast and um, a few have jumped up out to me. Um, Roman, of course, our opening one. And um, last week with, um, with Dean, so our last episode that went out. Um, and it was just interesting uh, to me about how... Um, how how the arts really enriched their lives, that they um, had hobbies which they loved and uh, like Dean loved singing, he was told he couldn't sing so then he, he took up singing and he's singing loads now and uh, Roman was afraid of fire, he did a fire course, he now breathes fire <laughs> whenever he can. So I'm interested to hear what our listeners do outside of their um, day jobs, outside their daily lives. What artistic um, hobby do they have, which you know makes, uh, which brings them joy, um, and you know enriches their lives. <laughs> and when when you say artistic, I mean how broad is that spectrum? I mean, for example, I like to cook, but I am not a professional cook. Is there an art to cookery um, for yourself and for your family? I don't know. I think there is actually. You, you get after you, you start getting creative with it. I mean, um, I uh, when I first moved in with my husband, he was very much like, "What are you cooking?" And I was like, "I don't know. When will it be ready? I don't know. <laughs> It'll be ready when it's ready." Let's just throw some things in there. So, yeah, I guess uh, create um, cookery is an art. I would go with that. But, I mean, I was just thinking from, like, kazoo playing to Morris dancing. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so a nice broad spectrum. So we want to hear people. And how can uh, people get in touch with you to let uh, let us know what they're doing to keep creative? We have a Gmail account. Ooh. Ooh, get us. Very 2010. I know. <laughs> um, so uh, you can drop me a line on upyourarts at gmail.com so you can send a little story, send a picture, um, send a video if you like. Um, I don't mind just um, anything just that you want to share about what you do um, and how you enjoy being creative. Now if people if people like to tweet, we are on Twitter as well at Up Your Arts. And so is that is it okay for people to tweet or will they be sent that back? Return to sender, did not get delivered, or is that is it okay? Can we do that? Yeah, happy to accept from Twitter as well. <laughs> well, and we'll feature some in the next episode. 
yes yes hopefully in this opening section we'll be able to um, start out with like oh, did you see <laughs> that's why brilliant I'm... stuff good <laughs> let's get those kids involved talking of getting the kids involved it's about time we meet our guest and uh, i've got to go and do a little costume change whilst you officially introduce them emily so i'll be i'll be back in just one second emily you carry on and tell everybody who it is oh well please welcome to the stage davina de campo <laughs> how wonderful to be with you oh there's uh, only one of you i was promised there was going to be two. Oh, oh <laughs> <laughs> so between us, uh, for those of you that aren't watching on YouTube, that are watching uh, without visuals, Emily is wearing a silver dress today. I <laughs> am wearing my best red wig. What do you think, Davina? Well, I actually own a wig that is almost identical to that. <laughs> <laughs> Has it got the bit of grey in it from misuse no. over the years? <laughs> no, I, mine is unfortunately lacking the grey hair in the wig, but in my own hair, there is more than enough grey hair to go around. <laughs> so if you ever need someone to play your mum, just remember where we met. <laughs> <laughs> I could be Karina De Campo, your mother. Could, uh... <laughs> Oh, you just look amazing. I mean, like, I've never seen you with hair, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> have you not? <laughs> well, yes, I used to have a lot of it. <laughs> Welcome, Davina De Campo, star of The Voice, all together now. Nobody's ever heard of that. Don't know what that is. Oh. And um, RuPaul's Drag Race. Well, I mean, the amount of young whippersnappers that must be coming up to you in Prime Arnie, Davina. It must be like, get off my leg. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. International superstar. I couldn't. No, I played Primark all the time. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you know, Davina, Up Your Arts is all about creativity. And um, we just want to ask the question how can or how has the arts enriched your life? And I know Emily's been researching you, so I'm going to let her. Um, uh, take it away i might have to take this week off because it's a bit hot <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i'm not set <laughs> but, so going on the art start, starting line and um, what was your first artistic hobby do you remember um the first thing i ever did that was kind of in the art realm was singing definitely singing like as a three-year-old i remember being in reception and the headmaster saying oh we have a little Pavarotti here today <laughs> i didn't know who the hell Pavarotti was but i knew that i was embarrassed oh. for real like by being by being made to to sort of stand out from everybody else by being pointed out as, as... yeah yeah i yeah. think so because you know I'm, I'm one of seven, so our family is naturally quite loud. We all speak quite loudly. We are just noisy people. Um, so that had obviously just carried through to school where I was, you know, singing my junior school banger of Morning Is Broken or whatever. And uh, there you are. She's embarrassed. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that hasn't seemed to have, uh, have held you back from singing or performing, though. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I think probably what happened was I was embarrassed for, you know, those few moments. And then suddenly I was like, oh, somebody thought I was good at something. Yeah. So that kind of ended up being, right, I'm good at this. I'll do that. I'll carry on with this. <laughs> What is it that you love about singing? Is it something that makes you free or um, is it just challenging yourself to go is as high as possible? Is it the money, <laughs> Yeah, the money is also a factor <laughs> that require paying and I was never very good at anything else. Uh, <laughs> sorry to my math teacher. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's I'd always, as a sort of kid, it was always the, the sort of thing that if I was upset or angry or, um, or if I was feeling joyous or, you know, it was something that I would do no matter what the emotion, it would, it would help. Um, 
or elevate it or make it better or you know whatever um and then sort of at sort of 15 ish i got a singing teacher and she being an international soprano she um she was one of the founder members of opera north Alison Price Joe. and honestly there are the sort of key people in your life that are just those inspirational idols yeah not because they're miles away, but because they're there and they're investing in you. Um, and she, she was that for me. Like she really invested in me, um, and that that kind of spurred me on to enjoying the challenge of it as well. You know, so the more difficult stuff. Yeah. Um, which then at university, I did a, a one of my units was twentieth um, century music. So I was doing things with that was really hard you know not just a bit like okay this is lots of moving or whatever you know atonal it doesn't have a set uh, key it doesn't have a set rhythm it doesn't have a set uh, time you know it's all changing all the way through and that um that that had come from the stuff that i'd done with her oh wow so with a background um of presumably to some extent of opera for uh, your teacher I've heard you uh, make some very very operatic sounds on a uh, set of all together now um but have you been classically trained or um has it been more uh, informal than that yeah much more informal than that like people people quite often describe me as classically trained and I have to say no I <laughs> classical training I am not classically trained because so what's the difference between those two things well so for me like the the strict term of classical training for for a vocalist for a, an opera singer is seven years so you spend wow. seven years doing you've got three years as your degree two years for your master's and then you do your uh, post you know your PhD and That's then your class so trained. much time oh, wow you could yeah. do panel beating bricklaying and become a vet in that time yeah. <laughs> But that's like being a ballet dancer, really. If you are classically yeah. trained, it's 14 years. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, you're yeah. talking. You know, you're starting at three and you are in training right the way through. And, and you're finished uh, by 30, love. Exactly. Heaps <laughs> <laughs> have all crumbled to dust. <laughs> <laughs> when you are a, one of seven and somebody uh, like your teacher points out, uh, that you're like a little Pavarotti. Does that give you at home or at school? Does that give you a, an opportunity to to stand out? And did you take that opportunity? I mean, knowing what we know of the Divina de Cambo, we've all seen on TV now. It seems like you're happy to stand out from the crowd. But... I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, the, the thing with that is actually when I'm at home with everybody else, they're all much louder than I am. <laughs> one in our family everybody else you're the quiet one, one in the, the decapo family, family. Yeah, <laughs> i am i am the quiet one in my family um so uh yes i think it did give me op an opportunity to stand out but like all of my brothers are because uh, my brothers are all older than me and then my sisters are younger than me and my brothers are all musical or uh have skills in other areas so like Matthew is a drummer, Guy is a guitarist, Hugh is like a science nerd, like super into science and stuff like that. And then Reese is really into history. So everybody had their kind of little thing that's really theirs. Like Guy, who plays the, the bass guitar, he's also, a, a, his illustrations are beautiful. Like visual artist as well. Um, so coming from a family like that, there is a lot of competition in order for you to, you know, be even noticed and recognised as being a human being. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I totally agree with all this. I'm the middle child of five. So, yeah, <laughs> I know what you mean. Like, like, I'm number five and every single item of my clothing had been worn by my brothers until I was about 15. Yeah. Is that why you started to buy seven inch heels so that they couldn't have them? <laughs> <laughs> so I was doing a little bit of a Google search of you last night, uh, yeah. and I found your Wikipedia. Oh, page. <laughs> Sorry. Are you stalking me? Do I need to call a lawyer? 
<laughs> you might need to. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was going, I landed on the Wikipedia page and apparently <clears throat> nothing happened for Davina De Campo between 2005 and 2015. Jail. Um, you She's don't seem like... Jail. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, you don't, don't seem like the, the kind of person who would be sat around twiddling their thumbs for 10 years. <laughs> No, um, <laughs> I certainly was not sitting around twiddling my thumbs, twiddling other things, but not my thumbs. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of where I started. Uh, 2005 would have been, did I, maybe I'd just graduated in 2005, maybe it was 2003, I can't remember. I mean, it doesn't really matter, does it? No. I <laughs> More I than I did, love, well done. <laughs> <laughs> so then I'd like worked in North Wales um, as a dance animator. So I was going into schools and community settings and um, either like working on performances with kids or adults or leading workshops or classes. Um, and at the same time, because it was in, uh, I was in Anglesey, I had to learn Welsh. So I would teach as much of my class in Welsh as I could, because part of the deal of, of working in North Wales is that you are bilingual. So to as much as an extent as, as was possible, I was teaching all of the routines in, in Welsh. Um, yeah. Wow. So um, all right now. Davina, tell me, how do you say, could you tilt your phone up, your boobs are showing, but your hair is not? How do you say that in Welsh? I can't remember. <laughs> well, could you just do it then, and then we'll learn something else in Welsh, <laughs> just for the YouTube viewers, dear. <laughs> We've got a lovely cleavage there for the last well, few minutes, not so. but not so much that, of the lovely, it. famous red hair. That's that, yeah. Yeah, we're happy with that. We're happy with that. Welsh, amazing. Um, yes, uh, but I've, because it's been like fifteen years now, really, since I've been doing it you know, uh, a lot, I've just forgotten it all. You know, I only Aww. know a very small amount of, of words. Like I can still pronounce things, that's not a problem. My pronunciation was always pretty good. So I can read it, so I can sing in it, but I couldn't, you know, I'd have to translate it so that I'd understand it and I wouldn't be able to just go, oh, it's about this, you know. Does anybody uh, know what par de beret means, uh, is in Welsh? No, because Welsh doesn't have uh, dance language, actually. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't have um, the same breadth of language. Because, of course, ballet is French, so they developed a whole set of language for dance, whereas Welsh never bothered. They didn't need to. You know, so you would say, like, hop yai or a uh, cross step, so you're doing, like, a cross step um, or a hop or, you know, but in terms of, specific this is this step that just doesn't exist wow. to my <laughs> wow. so um, I've got to tell you Emily when I uh, was speaking to Davina about doing this with us I said look all of the episodes are called the art of something the art of dot 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 yeah. the art of we've had the art of fire we've had the art of color we've had the art of uh, working the system and I said to Davina, you know, just give us some idea of what the angle might be here. You know, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> and she said, the art of battle do pig. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> you just want to show a clip of Babe. Is that the idea? <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm one of those people who I'm super anxious. And so I try and control everything and make everything perfect. I want it to be perfect and exact. I'm holding this weird piece of old type. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I want it to be perfect all the time. And that's not possible. You know, is the perfect piece of art is not possible. And actually what I've learned from doing um, cabaret specifically mm. is that when things either go wrong or are intentionally wrong, that's when the audience absolutely react the best to it. You know, you can deliver amazing punchlines, great jokes, sing beautifully, all of that stuff. But it's when something goes wrong, that's when the audience goes, ah, yes. And that's when they really fall in love with you. Yeah. So, um, and why do you think that is, Davina? 
because you're human. <laughs> well, I'm not, obviously, <laughs> but and you are. are. <laughs> yeah. and you, I'm human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's because of that. I think because um, because I've done shows where I've been really strict about it and I've made everything super slick and the dance is, is perfect and this is great and that's all perfect. And it can feel quite cold to an audience then, you know, because you put that wall in front of you and that's not really what you want from cabaret. It's not yeah. a West End show. It's cabaret. And the whole point is that you are in that space existing with those people in front of you. So it's about that conversation. So when when you show those vulnerabilities and oh, psh, oh, messed up those words, yeah, which I do quite often, and I would go, well, I messed that one up, didn't I? Can we move on? And that's when they go, oh, okay, great. It's that kind of show. Fine. You know, I was, I, I must, uh, I must have been only about uh, 17, 18, um, and I was uh, going to see my favourite singer, Alison Moyet, going to see her live, not for the first time, um, but she was in quite a small place like the Mean Fiddler, as it was um, in London, and, uh, you know, sort of maybe four or five piece band with her. And she started to sing a song and she got sort of uh, halfway through the first verse and then she just turned to the band and went, no, stop, we're not doing that shit. And she just started singing <laughs> Norwegian Wood instead, <laughs> which she's never recorded, which she didn't write. Obviously, she's not a Beatle. And it was like, and everybody was just like, yes, because they knew it was wrong too. It was yeah. not going well. It was, I was like in the wrong key or something, or she just couldn't get that note that day. I can't remember what it was, but the gusto, the gumption to just to go, no. I'm not going to just fake this for the next three minutes and make it seem like it's OK. It's not good enough. So we're not doing it. Scratch that. <laughs> and people people prefer that. They would rather you go, well, I mean, for some reason, my brain is not connecting with this today. So <laughs> in the bin, let's do something else. <laughs> in the bin, yeah. <laughs> and, like, that'll do, Pig, is about being realistic of the expectations of yourself yeah. you know I'm not Beyonce and she has 50 people around her to make her Beyonce yeah and me so I and it's just, just like you with your camera and sometimes your husband helps with the, with the suitcase is that the idea yeah, yeah. I mean quite often my husband poor Paul the, I mean the poor put upon Paul he like is being shouted at while filming no, can you do this? Uh, 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 you know, because because I want everything perfect. But equally, you have to go, well, I don't have that around me. So I have to be realistic about the expectations I'm putting on myself. And also, there's a level of time that you can devote to anything. And once you've kind of passed that amount of time, you have to go, that'll do. Yeah. What I've got is good enough. Because otherwise... You never put anything on stage and you just keep working on it forever and nobody ever sees it. Well, the whole point of art is that it is, it's a communication with people. It's, it's something that other people get to experience along with you. And if they never get to experience that, well, it's not serving its purpose. So something can be absolutely perfect. But if it's in a closed, sealed room that, and it never gets seen by another human being, then... What's the point of its perfection? Yeah, exactly. So, and that's, it's, that is even right at the beginning of the process, because quite often I, I will procrastinate and put things off and I won't do it because, oh, what if I do it and it's shit? Oh, might as well just not bother. I, I'll do some ironing instead. Oh, I, 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 those skating boards are dreadful. Better get them cleaned quick. <laughs> get me the rag where's the flash let's clean the skirting board you know rather than actually sit down and do something and it's uh it's giving your yourself the permission to fail as yes well. yes I absolutely i think you know when it comes to that 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 part of your brain that, that finding things wrong with something that you haven't even birthed yet 
it can be so debilitating for a creative person. You know, I'm sitting in my garden yesterday. I knew it was going to be a sunny day. I knew I had to crack on with episode six, the sixth chapter of my blog of my murder mystery. And there'd just been a murder at the end of chapter five. And so this is crucial what happens now. And people are going to be like, oh, really concentrate. It's going to be some clues, you know. And I basically sat in my sun lounge for four hours, staring at the sky going, no, that will be wrong. No, that will be a mistake. Oh, no, then I'll go down this wrong track here. No, that's not good enough. No, 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 that's not good enough. And I honestly got it was it was 4 p.m. before I started actually writing. And I don't think those four hours helped to create anything better. I think they just wasted four hours. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, you know, at the end of the day, this isn't fun anymore. I'm sitting here fretting about the about what I'm making so much that it hasn't. There's the joy has all gone out of this process, yeah, which is not nice. No, exactly. My doorbell's going. You two chat amongst yourselves. <laughs> My oh, this call today with this call. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the joys of doing this. <laughs> oh, God. But yeah, I was saying the other day, I was trying to put um, a routine together to teach class because uh, I teach burlesque. And um, the song I'd chosen, I just couldn't think of anything. I was just strutting around my living room going, we can't just strut for three minutes. And then I ended up doing my very first, teaching the very first burlesque routine that I did because I just couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> and, it was, and they loved it. So I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I've done a lot of that where I've, I've meant to do something new and then I've gone back to something old. And um, I'm doing a lot more of it now. Yeah. And because I'd, put, I'd always put a lot of pressure on myself. So 2005 to 2015, uh, I was, we opened a nightclub called The Factory. And every week we had a different show. So there were three, uh, three performers each week. And two of us were there every week. And then another one was on rotation. So there were like five or six different people. Everybody had four set shows. So it was like Cabaret or Chicago or West Side Story or, you know, whatever. Yeah. set shows like that and then um every month you had to uh we had to develop another four new numbers that was the kind of you do four new numbers and uh so I learned loads and loads you know loads about testing stuff out trying out ideas doing this stuff doing that stuff and allowed myself to be shit in different places um because out of the four numbers through the night I knew that three of them would be pretty solid. So if one of them wasn't that great, I could forgive myself for that. And the audience would forgive me as well, which is, you know, one of the things you have to remind yourself. As long as you put the work in, the audience will forgive you. They well, will always forgive you. It's interesting, isn't it? Um, first of all, I'm back. So I'm so sorry about that. So <laughs> I've got to just tell you very briefly, this is the first time my husband has gone out without me for any significant amount of time in nine weeks. First time I've had an important, you know, Zoom call that's this long in nine weeks and the freaking doorbell goes. <laughs> um, so I'm very sorry about that. But that's what life in lockdown when you're trying to create content is like, kids. And it, it's not perfect, but we're doing it anyway. So, I mean, what an amazing illustration of exactly what we're talking about. Um, Emily, do you remember, uh, uh, so I host a show which Emily produces, Deb, and a little while ago I brought along my ukulele, which is, I mean, it's early days for me and the uke. I'm not brilliant as a player, and I've written about three songs now on the ukulele, and I also had with me the usual uh, list of backing track songs that I could do, and I have done probably all before at Luscious Cabaret, which Emily runs. So we get to act two, you know, I make sure that we're in a place where the audience trusts me and we're all settled and, and it's going OK, so that we're in a place where we can take a risk, maybe. And I say to them, so we're about three quarters way of the way through the whole show. And I say to them, look, honestly, genuinely, I do not mind which you vote for, but I'm going to give you an option now and I want you guys to decide. I can sing a comedy song 
which was written by somebody else. It's very good. It's funny. I'm really good at it. I've been doing it for years. You've all heard it before, probably. And uh, it's to a backing track. And I can do that right now. And we'll have three minutes of giggles with that. Or I can go and get my ukulele and I can sing you a brand new song I've never performed in public before, which I wrote. It will go wrong, horribly wrong. Uh, it will be imperfect. And, uh, and it might be an absolute car crash, but it's something I've written. And uh, one day I'd like to share it. What do you reckon? And the, uh, I mean, like 99 people wanted the original song, The Risk, the <laughs> potential car crash. Yeah. And so I did it. And standing ovation afterwards. It was the nicest, <laughs> nicest thing. And it did go wrong. It went horribly wrong. I got chords wrong. I got notes and my vocal notes went wrong as well. It all went wrong. Was that the potato song? It might have been the potato song, yeah. <laughs> Great song. <laughs> I had, see, this bald gay man had a potato song long before Matt Lucas had a potato song, people. <laughs> so failure, you talked about failure earlier on, Davina, um, and I'm reminded that you very, very, well, it seems to me proudly was showing and re-showing clips of yourself falling over on stage a little while back. Yeah, I like I I don't like that stuff doesn't bother me because it happens. Tell and us what know. happened and when it happened. Where were you? So I it was the launch of a Drag Race song, which is my first single. Uh, just just so that we're all aware, my second single will be out on the twenty sixth of June. Go and do a load. Thank you very much. Uh, that's oh, called Drag Race. Second <laughs> single off my uh, EP Decoded. So the first single. Um, it was the launch at uh, GAY at Heaven in London. And I walk across the stage and as I step down, because there's like some steps at the front, but they're quite big. And I'm in like a, a quite tight, stretchy, fishtailed black dress. And I, as I step back onto the, uh, the next step up, my heel gets caught inside my dress and I sort of spin myself over and just end up laid on the floor in front of a thousand people. <laughs> <laughs> and you, just, you know, when that happens, you just have to go, well, I'm going to Naomi Campbell it. <laughs> <laughs> You chose not to bury that. You chose not to hide that and never, oh. never show a clip of it. And and but why, why, why go postal, as it were? <laughs> well, because um, it's one of those, one of the things which I I've not not really shown on altogether now. Other voice was that I am a human being, and I think too often we um, we look at you know people like Beyonce and Kylie and Madonna, and and they're not human. They're Madonna, they're Kylie, they're, n they're not human. Well, they are. Everybody goes to the toilet, everybody falls over, everybody makes mistakes, um, and that's okay. And I think that's, you know, for me as an artist, actually me putting that out there and saying, we all make mistakes, you know, I can do cartwheels and arrow springs and splits and all kinds of things, but I also fall over from time to time. <laughs> yeah. So if anybody else falls over from time to time, that's okay. Yeah. Because if, if me, who's had a lifetime of training in with my body, can still fall over, and you've never had any of that, well, that's absolutely fine, isn't it? Don't beat yourself up about it. And it's funny as well. It would be remiss of me to not point out that as a as an ex uh, full time drag queen myself, and and I still obviously you know do a sort of drag esque look sometimes on stage. But I, I used to do full drag, and I used to do it full time. And I've met many drag queens over the years. Uh, it would be remiss of me not to point out that in comparison to a lot of the drag queens in the world, you are very kind to. <laughs> other drag queens and other human beings in general. There is a like, I don't know, uh, am I just old fashioned or is there, a li uh, is there a meeting where you get told, but basically you must be a bitch. 
<laughs> to be a drag queen. And you decided to miss that meeting completely. Well, no, I, I had actually been at that meeting and I <laughs> out very early in my career. And um and part of part of the the reason why that I am the way that I am is because of that generation. You know, this is my punk era pushing against that. This is my punk yeah. movement pushing against that, being a cow, being a bitch, being nasty to people, making people cry for no other reason than they walked into your venue, you know? <laughs> uh, because I've, I experienced that. You know, I'd seen it and I'd seen how, um, how it affected people. And it's, it's incredible, I think, the amount of power, in a, especially in a small town, that a drag queen can wield in a community. Yeah. You know, that she can, somebody can walk into her venue where she's behind the bo box and she can make them feel completely unwelcome. You were, you were never wanted here and you never will be. With, you know, just in the first five minutes of that person walking through the door. And so I made a real conscious decision that that was not who I was going to be, having watched it, having seen that happen to people. Yeah. Um, you know, I still think some people are dickheads and I will tell them. <laughs> <laughs> she does, uh, it's true. <laughs> I've always had uh, an attitude of, um, you're only a bitch if it's not true, you know? So be honest with people, but you don't have to be mean about it. I was going to ask what you um, what you think is the best thing about uh, drag now, because um, like it's obviously changed in the past 10, 10 years. And um, that, I just sort of feel, has kind of answered the question. You want more positivity, more welcoming um, side of uh, drag. And I think that's really happening, actually. There's, there's lots of, um, especially the alternative side of drag. You know, it's much more welcoming, it's much more friendly, it's much more accepting of um, different ideas, different ways of doing drag. You know, mine is, I kind of describe mine as a sort of bridge between the new school, which is all about how you look, and the old school about what you do, because my makeup isn't, <laughs> you know, it's, it's on my face. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> That'll do. I'm not going to spend five hours doing my face because my my chisel is on stage. And that's fine. If your thing is painting yourself, that's absolutely fine with me. That's perfectly valid. That's your your drag. My drag is what I do. Um, and I think when it comes to being a, to uh, people like uh, you and your competitors on Drag Race UK, does that mean that to a certain extent it's a bit like uh, uh, judging apples and oranges? Yeah, I think it is actually. I think um, I think judging any art is really, really difficult. You know, that was one of my sort of quandaries with doing All Together Now was um, I was really sort of strict with myself about how I judged people. I didn't judge whether I liked it. I judged it about what they put on stage and does it fit the the sort of framework of what they've put on stage. You know, so if they're coming on as a 50s rocker group or a, a close harmony group, is it working as a close harmony group? You know, in that form, in that framework, is what they're doing delivering what it should be delivering as that? Um, rather than, well, she's got a massive voice and I love massive voices. So this girl, I'm not gonna vote for her because she's got a real sweet little voice, you know? It was yeah. for me. It was about what are they doing with what they've got and they what they've put on stage. Is it um, is it fulfilling that kind of niches that frameworks criteria? Are they doing what needs to be done with that piece of art? Um, so yeah, I I think there is an element of of apples and oranges because everybody is so different and the way we approach it, especially now, is so different. No more can it just be um, a sequin dress and a wig and red lipstick. You know that there has to be more to it now. Yeah, I think it's uh, probably the reason why you've been voted in the National Diversity Awards for an award. The stuff we've been talking about for the last 10, 15 minutes. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I, I mean, somebody has nominated me for uh, a National Diversity Award, and your mum. You, your mum. Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, unlikely, I'll be honest, my mum actually knows me, so. (laughs) 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 Um, So the way it works is for me to make a shortlist, um, you know, you go on and you vote for me or whoever, and it's it's under the celebrity category. Somehow reached celebrity status. I thought it was under the caution retail category. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so people can still vote and it's up until the 8th of June the the voting is is available. So you can either, it's all on my um, social media or you can go onto the National Diversity Awards website and you just click on the celebrity thing and you can vote for who you think it should be. (laughs) <laughs> definitely you <laughs> as we're starting to run out of time we did ask for a top tip did we oh not? yes <laughs> Davina. and we would love something for our listeners top tip with up your ass <laughs> my top tip for creativity because it's in whatever field you're working in is do it <laughs> start that, yeah. that's my top tip is start because you can go back to it you can completely change it but if you don't have anything in the first place there is nothing to make better so you have to put something down either on the paper or on the instrument or on your face or on a canvas before you can look at it and and then be um pragmatic and take your you know take the emotion out of it and look at it and be okay that's not great in it but i can change that and make it better yeah so that's that's my top tip is start i think that's so brilliant and so simple as well (laughs) (laughs) very simple (laughs) now davina um before we run out of time completely is there anything else that you'd like to um plug or anywhere that people can what's the best place to for people to message you or see what you're up to tell us all about this stuff yeah everything's on instagram and twitter and facebook um i'm really active on all of them so if you send me a message i will reply i'm not one of those people who just ignores everything in the other inbox i i try and get back to everybody um it, sometimes it takes a while, so don't be sending me messages going, why haven't you responded, you bitch? I hate you. Uh, <laughs> I had somebody do that to me the other day. They said, hello, how are you? And then within a minute, they wrote again and went, I'm only asking. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> a minute. <laughs> and is that all at Dina, Davina DeCampo or hashtag Davina DeCampo? Everything. And so that you know how to spell it, it's D I B I N A. So there's a dance routine and everything. <laughs> Oh, my God. I can't believe this has gone so quickly. It's been such a pleasure seeing you and talking to you again, Deb. It's so amazing to meet you. I was a bit fangirly when Paul has told me that he'd, um, he'd booked you. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> so I was <laughs> asking me on. <laughs> Well, we think it's a really important conversation about creativity and the arts. And, you know, given the, uh, the what will be left after this pandemic as far as venues and uh, lack of funding and stuff like that, I think it's a conversation we need to keep on having, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So for that reason, don't forget to get involved and stay in touch with us. You can email us at upyourarts at gmail.com, as Emily said earlier, and we'd love to know what it is that keeps you creative. And of course, you can find us on Twitter at Up Your Arts as well. Yes, and we're on Linktree, so you can find us yeah. Link tree is wonderful. It's this marvelous. Do you know what link tree? You know it, Davina. Oh, it's great, right? So yeah, link tree. It's like one link, and then it's all of your URLs in one place. It's amazing. But, so yeah. link tree front slash up your arts, and you'll be able to find us on Spotify, on Apple. We're on all the platforms, people. This will go on my YouTube channel so that you can also see how beautiful Davina looks, what my red wig looks like, and what Emily's beautiful silver dress looks like. So if you're <laughs> listening on uh, Apple, don't forget to leave us a review. Um, But also um, come over to uh, my YouTube channel, Paula Paula L. Martin, so you can see what a hash we make of the 21st century. (laughs) (laughs) 
we're so good at that. <laughs> we'll be back in a fortnight. Everybody wave goodbye now. Bye-bye. Keep creating. Bye.